welcomes you to Tempe, Arizona, and the 2006 Insight Bowl. The Texas Tech Red Raiders bring their high-octane air raid offense to the desert to take on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. It's a Big 12, Big 10 showdown next on NFL Network. Tempe, Arizona, the new home for the 18th annual Insight Bowl. We've got the Texas Tech Red Raiders out of the Big 12 taking on the Minnesota Golden Gophers out of the Big Ten. And welcome to the broadcast booth. It is my pleasure to welcome Dick Vermeil back Thank to you. the college game. And coach, as we looked at the numbers for Texas Tech, doing the research and what have you, it's astounding what makes this so-called air raid attack so effective. Well, Darren, they do everything it takes to throw the ball an average of 50 times a game extremely well. First off, they pass protect. The quarterback is very, very accurate. The receivers all catch the difficult balls, and then they run extremely well after the catch. They stretch you from sideline to sideline, from the line of scrimmage to the end zone. They throw on every down. And the other thing is the opponent doesn't get the defense this kind of offense very often. So it's tough. And it's amazing when you look at Graham Harrell, what he's been able to do. Yeah, it is. The sophomore has been leading this offensive attack. Third down has been a question mark for Mike Leach's group. Well, I know it, but it's, you know they don't have many third downs. They go one first down, second down, first down, second down. Get him on third down and stop him, then you're doing a good job. The Texas Tech Red Raiders, here you see them out of the Big 12 Conference with a record of 7-5. and five. They have won two of their last three. They are really playing well coming down the stretch. You see it's the seventh consecutive bowl appearance for Mike Leach. Let's talk about the Minnesota Golden Gophers, a traditional attack. And when you look at their defense, pass defense is not necessarily their forte, but they do it in other ways, Coach. Well, I think first they'd like to try to maintain ball control tonight and, and keep the tech offense on the bench and eat up the clock. Now, they're eventually they're going to have to play pass defense, and when they do it, they're going to try to disrupt the rhythm by getting after the quarterback, making him move, disrupt the patterns downfield with the variations of coverage, and then they're going to try to do an extremely good job of tackling the receiver when he catches. And here come the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 6-6. Six and six. They won their final three games of the Big Ten season to qualify for a bowl game. And it's the fifth straight year that Glenn Mason has his Gophers bowling. So it should be a good one. Texas Tech against Minnesota. The kickoff coming up next. And welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. Very first meeting ever between Minnesota and Texas Tech. Should be a terrific matchup. Big 10, Big 12. We talk about a couple of teams that have really played their best football coming down the stretch. Texas Tech, as we mentioned, making their seventh consecutive bowl appearance. Alex Flanagan caught up with the head coach. All right, Coach, this is the first time that these two teams have ever played each other. What is the biggest challenge that Minnesota presents? You know, I think the biggest challenge is uh, how we play. We just worry about how we play. But the biggest challenge, everybody's been on the shelf for a month and a half, and now we're going to see how it comes out. How important is momentum in this game? Uh, it's important, uh, you know, seizing it and keeping it. All right, Coach. All right. Texas Tech and Mike Leach, Darren, looking for their first win against a Big Ten team. Back down to the third member of our crew, Alex Flanagan. All right, Coach Mason, when you face a team like this offensively, what is the most important thing for you to execute defensively? Well, we like to keep them off the field. We like our offense to execute them. Uh, they're world renowned for their passing attack. I'm very impressed with their wide receivers. They can turn that five yard gain into a 20 yard gain. You can't stop them, you just got to keep playing. Knowing how quickly they can score and how much they score, how much pressure is there on you to score? Uh, well, the main thing we want to do is keep them on the field, off the field, and us on the field. You know, we are where we are. We're a run attack. We like to mix it up, but uh, we've got to do what we've done to get us here. All right, Coach Mason and the Minnesota Gophers looking to extend their three game winning streak, Darren. Thank you very much, Alex. So it's Joel Monroe set to kick it off for the Golden Gophers and. L.A. Reed and Shannon Woods standing back, and we are underway from Tempe. It's Shannon Woods bringing it up the center of the field and brought down immediately. And now we will get our first look at Graham Harrell, the sophomore from Ennis, Texas, who has thrown for over 4,000 yards, second in the nation. And we've been talking about how prolific this offense is. Put on your seatbelts because they like to throw it. <laughs> and they do it extremely well, and they do it well every year. 
First and ten. They're just shy of the 20 yard line, and we'll see this familiar four spread out wide receivers. Shannon Woods is the running back that is standing next to Graham Harrell out of the shotgun. They hand it off. It's Woods just crossing the 20 yard line as he's brought down immediately by Mike Sherrill. Take a look at the Taco Bell starting lineups. L.A. Reed, Amendola, Woods, Johnson, and Filani, who is coming back home to close out his career. January, Vasquez, Jones, Ramirez is the best of the bunch, along with Paul, who has NFL potential. <laughs> look at the line splits down there, Dara. Look at that left guard. They are really wide, Coach. Out of the shotgun, it's Harrells. He drills one, but it's knocked down at the last second pass. Was intended for Eric Morris, but Mannion in on the coverage. Very seldom do you see line splits like this. You know, they're so far apart. You see right here, look at the, look at the distance between the centers and the guards, the guards and the tackle. That really puts those offensive linemen on an island, but they're very good at handling that problem and that, that pressure. What does it do for the defense? It stretches him out and also provides throwing lanes for the quarterback. Harrell's again out of the shotgun again with some time. Plenty of time as he fires back to the near side of the field. Incomplete. He's looking for L.A. Reed, the freshman out of Conroe, Texas, but it's incomplete. Bring up second down and 20. Third down and 20. Harrell's again with plenty of time. And complete very close to the first down marker. It's Filani who brings it in, but I believe he's about a yard shy. A pickup of 19. He needed 20. Chances are they'll go for it. Filani, number eight, coming down in the slot there. Working back inside. You see him coming from the outside in right now to the left-hand corner of your screen. They'll go for it. And they are going to go for it. Oh, I don't think they made it. Harrell's tried to go off the left side, and I don't know. It's going to depend on the spot, but it didn't look good, Coach. It didn't look good from here, but we're so far away, I'm not sure who's down there. <laughs> Van de Steeg and Davis were in on the stop, and they did stop him. This is what Minnesota has to do. This is like a takeaway. When you get the ball, your initial drive on the 45-yard line, boy, you're playing on a short field. So the Red Raiders turn it over on downs. I'm and Brian Cupido makes his way out onto the field as they go with a quick snap. Little play action for Cupido. Fires across the middle. It's Simmons, the tight end, and he's got plenty of yardage, enough for a first down pickup of 13 yards on the play. Take a look at Cupido, the all-time leading passer in Minnesota football history, over 7,000 yards, and he played so well down the stretch, Coach, when they won three in a row in order to become bowl eligible. You know, and I watched each one of those ball games, and as you already said, he did play extremely well, and, and he has to within this scheme. Logan Payne goes in motion, but they go to the ground. That's Jay Thomas. David who gets the carry Fletcher session brings him down let's take a look at the Taco Bell starting lineups for the Golden Gophers it's Payne Penix Valentine the fullback out of Columbus Simmons who gets the start because of Spaeth and Wheelwright who has played fantastic within the last three games Ainsley Swagger Brinkhouse the center to Valley and to Geese who makes the start up front they're, Second down and six. They're in two tight ends with one wide out. They're going to move the tight end over. They like to run toward the motion when they do that. Yes, they do it right here. This is Penix, left tackle. And he gets up to the 25-yard line. He'll be about three yards shy of the first down as we take a look at the Taco Bell lineups. Texas Tech Red Raiders defense. Dawson, Bake, Hudler, and Ratliff up front for the Raiders. Tillman, Stratton, who reminds everyone of Zach Thomas and Sessions. Parker, McBath, Garcia, and Huffman are the defensive backs. Cupido to the air. Gets it out to Penix. 
He's got some space. Great he's going to be shy of the first down as he's brought down at the 24-yard line. Looks like it's going to be about a fourth and two. And uh, field goal kicking is somewhat of an issue for Minnesota. Jason Janini lost his job in the season finale, and Joel Monroe came in and he missed a 40-yarder. So it's not a stretch to think that they would go for it here, and they do. Well, they do all the time. This is part of their game plan. And he would rather have the ball in his hands, he says, than give it back. <laughs> so the, he's, you'll, you'll see them do this three or four times during the ball game. And they've converted 64% of the time during the regular season out in the flat. He's got it. It's his tight end, Simmons. He's on the sideline, inside the five-yard line, down at the two. Pick up of 22 yards. Dorsell McBath, the guy that was able to push him out. Well, a defender went for the interception and didn't get there. Therefore, he's free down the sideline, and I can't even see the number from here of which defender it was. Oh, there it was. That's that's Darcel McBath right there that went after it. Yeah, Chris Parker, the guy that was saved the touchdown, but yes. it's going to be first and goal to goal at the two-yard line for the Gophers. They're very good down inside in goal to goal situation. That offensive line does a great job of blocking. Play action. It's Simmons. Touchdown. So the backup tight end comes in. They had spate this All American John Mackey Award candidate who was not able to play in his backup comes in and catches the touchdown. First touchdown of his career. So that, that, he's going to remember that one. Play action pass, expecting run. They draw everybody up inside, extremely good fake, and lay it out there to Simmons. As I said, his first touchdown pass in his career that I know of. Good job there, Coach Mason. So Joel Monroe on for the PAT, which has been an issue for the Gophers. And he puts it through the uprights just like that. We were expecting this to be going the other way with this high octane offense, but it's the Gophers who strike first. Jack Simmons, the sophomore, catches the touchdown. And welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. The Golden Gophers out of the Big Ten strike first. The very first touchdown catch of Jack Simmons' career. A lot of people are speculating that when Matt Spath is, well, now that Matt Spath is leaving, that this is the guy that's going to take over. And uh, how, how, what a way to acclimate him. He, he's starting out right, I'll yeah. tell you that. <laughs> this is Shannon Woods. From the nine, up the center of the field, he gets stopped just shy of the 20-yard line. Here they go, no huddle. Again out of the shotgun. It's Harrell again in time. No pressure whatsoever. Oh, he's picked off. It's intercepted on the play. Steve Moore. It's Sheryls, Mike Sheryls, the captain out of Rochester, Minnesota who comes up with the interception. He had tremendous protection, a lot of time, and he didn't allow the receiver to get all the way around behind that linebacker. See, look, at he has all the time in the world. Feet set, bang, he pops it, but he did not allow the receiver to get all the way across the zone. He threw it a little bit behind it, and Cheryl comes up with his fourth interception in his career. How about this interception here, Coach? Well, he's sitting there in zone. Another complete pass by the Golden Gophers. There's Cupido, the, the all-time leading receiver. And it's complete to Troy Riley, the other tight end. So these young tight ends get an opportunity. They like to use two tight ends to balance up the defense, run toward the weakness of the defense with an audible on the line, or run play-action passes from it. They'll send Simmons in motion to the ground game. It's Penix still on his feet inside the 20-yard line before he's brought down by Chris Hudler. They brought a wide receiver from the outside to try to cut the defense with a crack block and get outside it. He actually missed the crack block, but he did get outside and move the ball anyway. You'll see the block appear from the left side of your screen. Now he's up inside the hole, and he just good balance, good vision. Keeps going forward, advances the ball, and finally gets knocked down. Bring up a second down and two yards to go for the Golden Gophers. 
They stay on the ground, and they get the first down. It's Penix once again. Real good block by Edward Tabali and, and Tony Brinkhouse inside center and right guard. And he started to the right, and he got a little cut back in. Really a good job there. You'll see it from this shot. You see the right guard, number six, right guard right here, center coming off. They get, and there's the cutback lane, and he finds it. Sometimes running backs will run with blinders. Penix did not. Rupido back to the ground. Penix working his way in. Yeah, he gets in for the touchdown. Just an old power play. You'll see the right guard stepping around number 66, pulling up in through there. That's Tavali leading up in there. And he is 305 pounds. You put a fullback up in there as well. You're going to create some space. You talk about offensive line play. They take a lot of pride in that here at Minnesota. And the extra point is good by Joel Monroe. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers out of the Big Ten. Amir Penix going in from two yards out. Minnesota up 14 nothing. We're back in a moment. And welcome back to the 18th annual Insight Bowl. 14 nothing is the score. A stunner, if you will, this team out of the the Big Ten Conference. Darren Horton, Dick Vermeil, Alex Flanagan with you here on NFL Network. We're so proud to present this Insight Bowl. And there you take a look at Amir Penix, another 1,000-yard rusher for Minnesota, following, following in the footsteps of his good buddy Lawrence Maroney. Yeah, and he's, you know, they've had a 1,000-yard rusher now for eight consecutive seasons. And for seven years in a row, they've had 2,000 yards rushing and 2,000 yards passing. So they are pretty balanced. It is a balanced attack indeed. This is Shannon Woods, and he's going to let it go. It makes its way. Beautiful kickoff. That Harris fumbles the snap. Fires complete. What great poise. Great poise by that young man. Dropped the ball, picked it up, good protection. Comes up and throws a strike, first down, move the chains. Thank well you. done. Grant Walker makes his second reception of this game. From the shotgun, you know, he, he took his eyes off the snap, looking at the defense just a little bit too soon, and obviously didn't catch the ball. First things first, catch the ball like that receiver did just there. Catch the ball first, then run with it. So it's Walker who finds an opening in that Minnesota zone. Just over four minutes to go here in the opening quarter of the 18th annual Inside Bowl. Harrells out to Fulani. Up the 40. Oh. Crossing the 30. Gotta inside the 30 yard line. He got a devastating block downfield there by Johnson. Robert Johnson got a knockdown, a, a D cleater. For a wide receiver, that's outstanding. Those guys are used to working in tandem. Both of them are seniors. Robert Johnson. The bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the block coming up right. Bang! Nice job. Then that's another 15 yards. Well done. Harrells with some time. Now he's brought down. He fumbles! He fumbles on the play. Willie Vandesteek forces the fumble, and the Golden Gophers come up with it. He was rushing on Glenn January, number 69, the left tackle, and, and Harrell had the ball and didn't get rid of it. He held it just a little too long to set up in a five-step drop that close. Again, another takeaway. Here he is, Vandesteek, number 91. That's how he keeps coming. He keeps coming, keeps pushing. See, you can't hold the ball that long in a five-step drop that close to the line of scrimmage. You've got to get rid of it. You have to feel that as a quarterback. And once he gains experience, he will sense that coming. And he plowed Glenn January all the way back to the quarterback to create the fumble. So it's Cupido back to work. And they stay on the ground with Penix. And, Coach, I don't know if this game could have unfolded any better for Glenn Mason. No, it's, it's going, I think, much better than anticipated. <laughs> How could you ever anticipate this? But they are playing true to profile. They take the ball away and they tackle well. And we were talking about how Minnesota had to win the time of possession. We're seeing them bear down on this run game. As they get Amir Pinnock's involved, he picked up seven on that carry. And now they have a second and three. 
This time, Pinnock working right side. Cuts it back. He's got room. Still on his feet as he stumbles across the 40-yard line. A pickup of 22. They, they were in a. They were in a bunch set, meaning three receivers bunched up in blocking position over here to the right side of the screen. Then they toss the ball behind him. You'll see 84 goes in and pins the defense right there, then slides off, and he does a great job. Logan Payne, 84, does a great job by getting to the second level on the linebacker and clears the running lane. Again, good kick out blocked right there by DeGeese, 79, the offensive tackle. Big game. And a near... Penix is following in the footsteps of the likes of Lawrence Maroney. This is Cupido. Beautiful pass out in the flat to Eric Decker, who makes the grab. And another first down for the Golden Gophers. And there's so much talk about the absence of Matt Spate. They don't seem to be missing him that much. Let's go downstairs, Alex Flanagan. Hey, Darren, don't seem to be missing him at all. You guys mentioned how he played this season with a separated shoulder in three games. You did have the surgery, Matt. Tell me a little bit about the timing and, and what your thinking was in the timing of your shoulder surgery. Well, you know, it happened about mid-season, and I, and I decided to put it off to try to finish the season so, you know, we could get to a ball game, get here. And then when it came to the, the season ending, I just, I just had to get it done. I, I really couldn't afford to wait five more weeks in just for one game. And, you know, everybody, everybody said that was the right thing to do, and uh, everybody respected my decision. Your coaches and players say that you playing in those games are the reason that they're here, and your leadership has gotten them here as well. The history of tight ends at the University of Minnesota now is a pretty magnificent history with Ben Utech. You, what do you see in the future of the young Jack Simmons, especially after his start tonight? Well, yeah, I didn't even got to say anything after the way he started tonight. I've, I'm a little worried that if he keeps playing the way he is, people probably won't even remember me anymore. <laughs> uh, Darren and Coach, um, what do you think the chances of that happening are? I don't <laughs> think so. Well done. This is Cupido, and it's Simmons on cue, making a big grab inside the 15-yard line for another Gophers first down, a pickup of 26. Cupido hits him in a seam pattern down there, a straight vertical drive, and threw it right on the money, coming down to the period. Number 80 coming off the, now you'll see him work the field vertically. He gets swapped by the linebacker, and he works into the seam behind the linebacker, throwing behind him, flexible enough to reach up and take the ball. That was a fine play by that young man. Simmons has four catches for 63 yards and a touchdown. Twins on the right as Cupido goes back to work. He's checking, playing an audible. They go to Thomas this time, right side, spinning his way down to the five-yard line. He audible because he saw the linebacker move out to the slot, so he called a play, in which they cross-blocked. You'll see it from the right side of your screen here. They're going to cross block here and pull out, if I read that properly, and then hit the hole because the linebacker had moved out. There they go, bound the block. Here comes the guard around, gets a chop block. Up, up to inside the go with Jay Thomas. And I like this Jay Thomas. He's got some juice. He is a freshman from Oakdale, Minnesota. Double tight end set on a second and two for Cupido. Back to Thomas for the first down, spinning and working his way inside the one-yard line. Jay Thomas is an interesting story. He tore an ACL last year in bowl uh, preparation. Then he missed the spring, and he came back, and they put him at the receiver position to, to break him into a, in a less of a contact position than a running back position is. And then as he got 100% and his confidence back in his knee, they moved him back to the running back position. And, Coach, we have reached the conclusion of the first quarter here in Tempe. All Gophers, 14-0. Jack Simmons with the first touchdown, Amir Penix with the second, and the Big Ten with a 14-0. First year this game is being held here in Tempe. Great place, but I'll tell you, we were up here practicing last night. It wasn't a Chamber of Commerce night. I was frozen. <laughs> it was cold. I, was I got my Under Armour on now, though. I'll tell you that. I, you can't prepare, Coach. It makes you feel strong. I, I can't <laughs> say I'm surprised, though. First and goal for the Golden Gophers. We open the second. They go underneath. It's Valentine. Did he get in? Yes. Touchdown. Justin Valentine, the junior from Columbus, Ohio. That's his only carry this year that I have recorded. 
He carried the ball 23 times last year. Just slipped it to him quickly and came off, came off and faked the option. See, he ends it right and it goes down the line of scrimmage to keep the defense moving. Hand it inside, he gets the, he gets the yard they needed to the touchdown. 21 zip. Who would have guessed? His fourth touchdown of the season as Joel Monroe comes on to make it a 21 nothing lead. So he has carried the ball this year. He had a couple carries, yeah. I didn't have that. God, He's a short mistake. yardage First guy. mistake I made, man. I know. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> well, Valentine's here in, during the holidays. A one yard touchdown for the fullback to make it 21 nothing. And welcome back. 21 nothing. A shocking score, if you will. Go, Dick. I mean, everybody Let's thought go. Minnesota going, was going to be competitive, but this Big thing has been lopsided. Mass, it's all about, and we, everybody thought it was going to be lopsided the other way. I know it, but I'm telling you, this isn't over yet. You know, it isn't over yet. Minnesota, led by Mitch Browning, the offensive coordinator, has done an awfully good job of executing their game plan. Out of bounds. Well, that one will go out of bounds. That was something that we've seen from Joel Monroe, but that time he doesn't get it through the end zone. First down from the 50 for Harold. Again with plenty of time. Stepping up, and now he's going to be brought down as he was trying to escape. Neil Allen got the arms around him and brings him down. Marcus. Graham Harrells again dumps it off underneath. That's Robert Johnson who makes the grab. Barber in on the along with Mike Sherrills, the junior captain. What they did that time, Derek, is they showed the same three-man defensive line, going to cover with eight, but they changed up, and they blitzed off the corner with some linebackers. So they actually had more people in rush this snap, even though they gave them the look. So just what Cheryl said in the interview on the screen a few minutes ago. We show them something, then we do something different. They kind of bait you. Third and nine now. Harrell's out of the shotgun. Working from the 49. Fires. And Robert Johnson cannot pull it in. Kevin Mannion in on the coverage. So that's, that's a hard one to catch when you're running a, a sort of a, a seam post down there, and, and there's a safety uh, on your outside ear, and there's a sun guy right underneath, and you're going in there. That that can be a big headache catch. This guy doesn't drop many footballs either. He's already caught 80 balls coming in in here. So this will bring in Alex Reyes on to boot it away. Uh, that's Dominic Jones, who is tops in the Big Ten in punt return, averaging 20, uh, actually 11.5 per return. He makes the first down every time he returns the ball on the average. And what a beautiful punt by Reyes as they down it at the three-yard line. So a happy holidays to you and yours. Darren Horton along with Dick Vermeil and Alex Flanagan, 18th annual Insight Bowl and the Golden Gophers, the Snowbirds, if you will, have come down here. They are enjoying themselves. Glenn Mason's team up by 21, but uh, this is the worst field position they've had all night. They better be careful here. In the Michigan State situation, they they took a, they got hit for a safety in this situation. Cupido rolling. Intercepted! Oh, intercepted on the bubble! Covered by the Golden Gophers in the end zone. Justin Valentine comes up with it. It was Antonio Huffman who picked off the pass. He fumbles the ball, and what a break. I can't believe this is happening to me, he says. I can't believe this. It was the big play that they were looking for, Coach. <laughs> they run play action pass. Comes out there. He throws the ball. Now it, it gets picked off. Come right underneath. Huffman comes right underneath it. He's going to score with it. It gets knocked out by Penix. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Woo! They made more yards on the, that play than they would have otherwise. What happened on that last play? Well, they tried to get the ball to Logan Payne, the wide receiver coming out here in motion short and he's going to come out and run the out as the tight end comes down the seam but Hoffman dissected it did a nice job of coming back underneath reading back inside out takes the ball away now pinning inside out and knocks the ball loose a takeaway and a takeaway the interesting thing is Penix was a free safety in high school <laughs> Malcolm Shabazz clearly has not forgotten how to tackle oh. Penix again breaks a tackle big hole He's off to the races down the right sideline as he gets inside the 30-yard line before Chris Parker brings him down a pickup of 30 yards. They, they use Jack Simmons, the tight end, blocking back across the grain. 
and, and broke up inside. You'll see Simmons right over here go in motion and block across the grain. There he goes back, crocks the grain, back right up inside off, off Brinkhouse 77, and then off he goes. Not the fastest back in the Big Ten, but to, he does have good elusive. Notice how he picked his feet up, and notice how he carries that ball high and tight. That's why they don't fumble very often. Penix has gone over 100 yards in this game. They go the end around to Logan Payne. He breaks a tackle, still on his feet as he crosses the 20-yard line. He broke the tackle, yeah, no question. Yet. One team is playing at a level much higher than the other team right now. I don't know if they're mentally fresher or more excited about being here, but there's just no comparison in the tempo of the two teams right now. It's interesting. We had a chance to talk to Glenn Mason about how he approaches bowl games. He says, I want my kids to have fun. He said they worked them hard at home. When they brought them here, they eased up and said, let's have some fun. But you know something? The only way to have fun is to win. And they're doing that, too. <laughs> you can say that. Uh, how about the time of possession, Coach? One of the keys that you said was very important for Minnesota. Well, that's what Glenn told me, so I was just repeating him. Oh, he's going to score with it. Yes, he is. Into the house for the touchdown. Ernie Wheelwright, the junior from Columbus, Ohio, gets the touchdown. Chris, Chris Parker went for the interception, the knockdown, and missed. And that's the chance you take. See, he jumps it. He's going to go for take it. He doesn't get there. Wheelwright does a nice job of going right down that sideline. Blue, blue ballet dance. Well done. By Wheelwright has good wheels. He certainly does have good wheels. And once again, it's Joel Monroe coming on to tack on the PAT between the uprights and good. And wow, 28-0 Minnesota with the lead. Wheelwright from 14 yards out dances up the sideline for the touchdown here at the Insight Bowl. Talk about being stunned. The Red Raiders down 28 0. This is what they like to do to their opponents, but right now they find themselves trailing by four touchdowns. What a way to close out a career for, for that young man. The all time leading passer in Minnesota history. His 21st touchdown pass of the season. He'll be in an NFL training camp next spring. You like his arm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's doing a great job. He's throwing some deep comebacks. He's, he's doing extremely well. L.A. Reed from the 10. Oh! <laughs> and he's Did you see down. that coming? Carroll again. This time it's Filani cutting it back. Fighting his way up near the 45 yard line, very close to the first down marker. Duran Cooley able to bring him down. Talked about the Golden Gophers and. They're so opportunistic, and Coach, I've always wondered if you had Rams teams that were able to get turnovers. Is that a matter of coaching? It's an emphasis. Everybody emphasizes it. Everybody talks about it. Some people stick with it better as a coaching staff, and players buy into it. And I, I did the best possible job I could do, and sometimes I didn't think I did a good enough job. This is Woods bringing it back, crossing the 50 as he gets a first down, knocked out of bounds. At the 45-yard uh, line, Duran Cooley able to knock him down before he picks up 13 yards. I've been on the sideline and have a player in at Kansas City walk by me and say, "Coach, we're plus one." That's people that way. We're plus one. They, they, you know, they they bought into understanding the value of taking the ball away and playing smart and being secure with the football. Well, a lot of coaches say you should put the turnover margin as the score as opposed to the score because the turnover margin really is a great indicator. More often than not. First down, Texas Tech still looking for their first touchdown in this game. Woods, good run, nice the middle, cuts it outside. He's got another first down as he's knocked out of bounds at the 10 yard line. A great Steve job. Davis able to bring him down. A defensive lineman making that play, what, 18, 20 yards downfield. Great hustle by Steve Davis. First and goal to go just inside the 10 yard line. He's audibling. It's Wood on the ground. Still on his feet inside the five, and he'll be brought down by Cooley at the one. See, he looked up there, and Minnesota was still in a three defensive line configuration. 
and he, he didn't expect that down there that close to the goal line so he audible to a running play to take advantage of it. So second and goal just under five minutes to go. You'll, you can bet they'll have more defensive linemen in on this snap. And we should emphasize that Texas Tech is a quick strike offense so despite the score the Red Raiders can put some points up on the board very quickly. Carroll out of the shotgun, and that's Wood for the touchdown. Well, it's taken him a while to get going, but I'll tell you, once these guys get going, when you study, when you study them on film, they start adding points quickly. Shannon Woods. Shotgun handoff. He's going to hand it off and run over to the left side of the offensive line. He gets a great block by Luis Vasquez, number 65, at the point of attack. That Vasquez is six foot six, 341 pounds. If you had a defensive tackle as a son playing there, you wouldn't want to play against that great big guy, would you? <laughs> no, no, sir. <laughs> Trulica with the extra point. Texas Tech on the board. A one-yard touchdown run by Shannon Woods and the Red Raiders cut the lead to 21 here at the 18th annual Insight Bowl. This Dominic Jones, the kickoff return guy, is special. He is very, very good. He's number one in the Big Ten, and, and he can bring it back. The average is 24-4. He'll take it from his own goal line. Brings it right side, cuts it back, still on his feet. Working his way up just shy of the 20 yard line. First down for the Golden Gophers, just across the 30 yard line. Dupino rolls, fires, wide got open. a man wide open, and it's Simmons once again. A huge gain as he's brought down at the 30, 38 yards by the backup tight end. He's terrible. They they bootlegged and, and faked one way, and the quarterback came off, and they threw to the tight end, coming back off this side over here. He starts it here, and then comes back out, and here he comes down the middle of the screen. Right down the hole. Safety bit. He's not there. Nice throw. Big game. Jack Spieth. Uh, Jack Simmons, I should say. There's Matt Spieth, who he's replacing, the John Mackey Award winner. Here's Cupido. Back to the ground. Pinnix. Still on his feet, dancing, and he's got another first down. You see that little shoulder shake that he gives? That was really a nice move. He has that little jerk with his shoulders, and, and he froze the defender, but he kept his feet moving. Concentrate on the running back now as he moves. He cuts back. Now watch his shoulders. See him dip there? See him dip right there? It freezes the defender just enough time to use his feet to get outside. Well done. Good move. Boom, boom. Looks like you when you were a young kid. Huh? <laughs> I don't know about that, Coach, but I'll take it. Take the credit. Take the credit. <laughs> Well, rolling, throwing it back the other way. Caught for a touchdown. Oh, did you talk about <laughs> the Logan your way. Payne falls it in. And that was a beautiful pass. He wasn't necessarily wide open, Coach. No, he wasn't. It, it could have been picked off. But it, when it's going your way, it's going your way. Quarterback sprint to his right, comes all the way. He's going to like was going to run an option. Then he sees the defenders coming on the blitz. And he throws it this one up. You talk about coming out smelling like a rose. Wow. Put right where he had to. Unbelievable job. Logan Payne, the senior from Lando Lakes High School in Lutz, Florida, catches the touchdown and the PA team between the uprights and good. Well, it's been a complete debacle in the first half for Texas Tech, but Mike Leach, his teams, as you mentioned, one of the most prolific offenses in college football. Let's send things down to Alex Flanagan with the head coach of the Golden Gophers. Coach, we talked about the importance of time of possession coming into this game. Describe your team's execution in the first half. Well, our defense uh, got us off uh, momentum pretty darn good with those uh, turnovers. And uh, I don't think our offense has been stopped yet. We've got some big plays. And you know, let's face it, every break has gone our way. And you know, we got a pretty good lead at halftime. When you play a team like this, uh, they can score in any play. We still have a half a football to play, obviously. They can score so quickly. How do you guard against them doing that in the second half? Well, I don't know why we've changed anything that we've done so far. Um, you know, the idea was to move the ball offensively to keep them on the sideline, and which we did. And our defense probably played a little bit better than anybody expected. 
All right, Glenn, thank you so much. Darren, thank this you. is the third time this year that Minnesota goes into the locker room with 35 points. Thank you very much, Alex. What a first half for the Golden Gophers. 35-7, Glenn Mason's team out of the Big Ten on top. Dominating Texas Tech here at the 18th annual Insight Bowl from Tempe, Arizona. Here at halftime of the Insight Bowl, 35-7, Minnesota with the lead on Texas Tech. Back here at the broadcast booth, along with Dick Vermeil, Darren Horton. As we get set for action here in the second half, you take a look at Mike Sherrills and what a terrific job he did. He had one of the turnovers. And talk about how opportunistic lead the nation in turnover margin there. Van der Steeg and yeah, this is a team that, in all honesty, they were left for dead when they walked off the field in Columbus, losing to Ohio State 44 to nothing. They had a, a team meeting, and ever since then, everything has gone right. They've well, won three in a row. And Glenn Mason and his coaching staff have done an outstanding job of bringing the kids back. Obviously, he says he has great character on the roster, but you've got to give these coaches a lot of credit. They've done a tremendous job, and that's not surprising. John Mason has been coach of the year in three different conferences, you know, so and, and won three different schools, and he's, he's done an outstanding job. Dominic Jones will take the knee in his own end zone. He is an outstanding Coach, as we take a look at the uh, Nissan first half statistics, coach, what, what sticks out to you? Well, here's what they wanted to do control the clock, take the ball away, they're plus two there, and produce points. That's the critical thing right there. That's the difference maker. And of course, as we were talking about, coach, that zone that was drawn up by the defensive coordinator, David Lockwood, has been outstanding. The, the other thing, offensively, they've only had two third down situations all first half. And they get the ball to begin the second half. And again, they start on the ground, and again, they got about five yards on the play. Downstairs to the third member of our crew, Alex Flanagan. Hey, Darren, well, before this game started, I asked Coach Mike Leach what the key was and what the biggest challenge this Minnesota team might present. He said it wasn't really about Minnesota. It was about Texas Tech and whether or not they would be able to play their game. At the half, he told me that they have had a number of mishaps and they have to gain control of this game and play Texas Tech football. You guys, they average 19 points a half. They have not, obviously, with seven points. They only allow 328 yards a half. Minnesota, I'm sorry, a game. Minnesota already has 330 yards of offense just in the first half, Darren. Thank you very much, Alex. This is play action for Cupido with plenty of time. They complete on the near side to Ernie Wheelwright, and they've got yet another first down. He is throwing the comeback with action, moving the quarterback toward the comeback. He's also throwing that same ball, deep comeback, by moving away from it and throwing all the way across the field. Those are difficult throws, especially throwing all the way across the field. He's got a strong arm. He three, is a senior three. coach, accurate too. Accurate. He's a guy that we're likely to see at the NFL scouting combine that you can see on NFL Network in February. He's 14 for 17 right now. Penix skipping. Good defense there. <laughs> he was met head on by Dante Ward. The out. Brock Stratton all in. The also outside, in on the tackle. The outside linebacker did a good job of constricting that play and pushing it back to the inside. And, and Valentine did a, 18 did a good job of blocking him, but the defensive penetration stopped it from breaking and getting into the end zone. Texas Tech has just been unable to stop this Minnesota offense. And Amir Penix gets the handoff again. This time he's stuffed by Joe Garcia. That was a great job by Key Dawson, number 96, the defensive left end coming around there. Got penetration. Actually, I think might have tripped him up with his right arm. Did a real nice job. And this guy is a good football player. When you watch him play on tape, you can see him. You'll see him come from the right side of your screen down underneath number 80. Right there, underneath Simmons, it gets that penetration. Helps slow it down, and then he gets some help from his buddies. Nice play. Nice play by Key Dawson. So they're going to bring in uh, Joel Monroe to attempt a 20-yard field goal. This has been somewhat of an adventure for the Golden Gophers. PATs and field goals. The kick is up, and he sneaks it inside the right upright to add three more to the board. Make it 38-7 Golden Gophers on top here in the 18th annual Inside Bowl. Then all Gophers back in a moment. 
And welcome back. 38-7 Minnesota all over Texas Tech. It was a 16 play 78 yard drive that took seven minutes and 13 seconds coach. Uh, dare I say it's a Parcellian a Bill Parcellian drive. Oh it was and the key play on it was that fourth down call. And you run the play action to sneak the tight end. Uh, across the formation and make a big play. Interestingly enough Bill Parcells was an assistant coach for the Texas Tech Red Raiders in the 70s. He and Romeo Cornell were on the same staff. I was head coach at UCLA at that time. That's how old I am. <laughs> <laughs> Monroe with a high kick but it's going to be short. It's L.A. Reed up the center of the field and he's going to be shy of the 25 yard line. So Graham Harrell going back to work. Harrell with some play action and plenty of time. Pump fake deep. He's got a man. Touchdown. Filani. They had him double covered too. They rolled the coverage that side and had him the safety has to make that play. But a beautiful throw. Great patience by Harrell to allow that to develop. Good pass protection. You'll see the quarterback gets an awful lot of time. He's waiting for it to happen. He's, he pumps it, freezes the safety, and the safety just doesn't get back there to make the play. See, there's the corner, Dominic Jones. Now, here's the safety right there. Now, that's Cooley, number 26. He should be deeper than that man and turn back looking toward the receiver. The extra point is through and good. So now it's 38 to 14. Joel Falani, the native of Phoenix, Arizona, with a touchdown reception. We're back in a moment. And welcome back to Tempe. 38 14, Texas Tech fighting back. Falani, the native of Phoenix, coming up with a big touchdown grab. Darren Horton, Dick Vermeil, Alex Flanagan with you. The 18th annual Inside Bowl presented in high definition on NFL Network. And with that catch, he set an all-time school record for yards by a wide receiver, I understand, right? Yeah. He needed 124 coming in. I think he has 130 right now. Job well done by that young man because they've had some good receivers come through that school. Yeah, and closing out his career, he thought it was going to be a storybook ending. It still can be, but they have a lot of work. As too good gets a foot into it, boy, he did. And Dominic Jones will bring it out. Jones splitting the 15, spinning. He is still on his feet. And he, is, he is the leader of that defensive football team. 38 to 14, Texas Tech has not been able to stop this Golden Gophers offense. Play action for Cupida. Pump fake, avoids the rush, and throws it away. Again, that was a great job by. Key Dawson, Keontae Dawson coming around there. Yeah, he actually had the quarterback, but he. Cupido. Cupido ducked under it. You'll see him come off the top right hand side of your screen. He comes around. Here he'll flash. He has real good acceleration. Wham! Just about gets him right there. For some reason, it looked like he pulled off it. Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah. Perhaps he was worried about a face mask. I don't know, but it looked like he had a good shot at it. This guy's a good player. Deontay Dawson, a senior from Shreveport, Louisiana. Second down and 10. Three step drop for Cupido out. I missed the audible. Yeah, it seemed like there was some miscommunication. Yeah, he was looking he, for Logan Payne. Yeah, he audibled, but Logan didn't get the audible. And, and Glenn says, Come on. What's wrong, guys? We've been communicating all week. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Why not tonight? Well, now it'll bring up a third down and 10 for Minnesota. Third and long. They haven't had many of those third and longs. They haven't been, they haven't asked. They haven't been forced to convert a third and long tonight, have they? No. Three receivers split out for Cupido on a third and down and ten. Cooper pressure hits him, pressure, and down he goes. That is deep bake. 51. Did a great job. I, you know, I watched him on tape, and, and he's one of those real, real high motor guys. He'll be right in the middle of the screen as you come back and take a look at this. Here he is, uh, right to the right of the center. He's coming up. They, they double. It was to the left of the center. Excuse me. They flopped their defensive tackle, and, and he beat Tyson Swigert there, number 56, the left guard for the sack. Good job. So now Justin Kusek on to put it away for the Golden Gophers. Danny Amendola 
back to receive the punt. Takes it at his own good job. 39 yard line and brought down immediately by Eric Decker. Break of the action. Minnesota in total control. 38 14, but here come the Red Raiders. And welcome back. 38 14. Look at Justin Kusek over there. He's been sitting on the sideline. I'm surprised he didn't get cold over there, coach. This is the first punt of the game, and we thought we'd show the Minnesota fans this <laughs> just to, to make them realize they still do have punt formation in their offense or defense. <laughs> Unbelievable. Coming with two minutes and uh, 10 third. seconds to go in the third, and, and pretty good coverage to boot, huh? Yeah, you, to boot. <laughs> Harrell out of the out of the shotgun, stepping up and knocked his appears that somebody hit his arm. Came around behind him. Yeah, I think it was Steve, Steve Davis. Davis. Yeah, he yeah. got a hand on him. Yeah, well, he, he's been effective all year. He had four and a half sacks coming into this ball game. He's a high motor type guy. He'll be at the top left hand side of your screen. He keeps sliding up. See, he doesn't. He was being held, but he doesn't stop. You know, if a quarterback's going to hold the ball and the rusher will keep coming, you got a chance. Look at those little M's on his cheeks there. <laughs> his mama liked that. Yeah, one. Steve Davis out of St. Louis. His cousin is actually Lawrence Maroney. Really? Second and ten. <laughs> they go backwards. He has yeah, a crease and he'll pick up three. six yards as the clock continues to. Six down. Deion Hightower able to make the, the tackle. Coach, how important is it for this Texas Tech team to score quickly? We know they have the ability to do it. I tell you this, I think uh, a pop a pop Warner coach could tell you how important that one is. <laughs> when you're down by 24, you better get some points on the board as quickly as you possibly can. Fortunately for this offense, it's designed to do that. They just haven't done it tonight. They lead the nation in quick scores. Again, a quick pass. This time complete to L.A. Reed, and he works his way into uh, Golden Gophers territory. He's a tough guy, you know. I watched him on special teams. He's their gunner on spread punt, and he's great on kickoff coverage. Uh, he'll make a living someday, maybe the NFL just cut doing that. He is spectacular at doing it. They really are excited about him. He'll get a lot more opportunity next year with the graduation of Joel Falani and. And Robert Johnson. And there was a player pretty good the leading receiver with, with Hicks wasn't eligible to play in this football game. But, not, but he was a, not a leading receiver, but a very good receiver for them. Again, they go to the ground game. It's Woods close to more first down yardage. A fumble at the end of the play, but they say he is down. Under a minute to go here in the Here's third the quarter. Raider. Second down and one. Here's Harrell with some time. Looking at the corner, it's Amendola, but he can't hold on. Nice, nice touch on that ball. Beautiful throw by Graham Harrell. Look at it. Look at it. He is upset. He's, this guy's going to be something special, I think, somewhere down the road. See the nice touch he pushes that ball right over the outside shoulder, just where it has to be. The receiver actually. I would prefer the receiver to catch it over the outside rather than turn and catch it the inside because your defender's on the inside. So right. keep, the, keep the defender inside, you turn and catch the ball over your outside. Well, Amendola couldn't hold on to it. Danny Amendola, the junior out of the Woodlands, Texas. Third and 12 for Harold. They're coming after near the four man. They're change up. Not, not a catch, I don't think. We got a flag down on the play as Harold one hops it in looking for Todd Walker. Illegal formation. Not enough bail on the line of scrimmage. It. That penalty just declined. Sure, sure. Get fourth, fourth down. down. And with three seconds remaining in the third quarter, it'll be fourth down for the Red Raiders. And of course they will go for it being down by 24 points. He came into this game talking about how is Minnesota going to stop this high octane offense? Well, it, they, had, they had a defined plan and it really a simple plan. They were going to cover and make him hold the ball and get the pressure by forcing him to hold the ball. And here they do it once again. And that time it's complete. That's Walker who makes the grab. It looks like it's enough for the first down, and it is. That was a deep comeback. Took a lot of time. Oh, 
Walker, Todd Walker with a big grab. The Red Raiders knocking on the door. 38-14, Gophers with the lead here at the Insight Bowl. And welcome back to Tempe, Arizona. 38-14, Minnesota enjoying the holidays here at the Insight Bowl, 18th annual Big Ten, Big 12 matchup. And we were expecting some high-octane offense. We thought it was going to be the guys in white, but it's those maroon and gold jerseys that have done all the scoring. But the you Red know, Raiders are knocking on the door, Coach. But Minnesota's been a good offensive team, really, all year. I mean, they, they, they've done a pretty darn good job. I mean, they've moved the ball. They've averaged 368 yards a game. They've averaged 27.9 points a game. You know, so they've done a pretty good job offensively. But the whole package together is what they've done tonight. Defense, offense, taking the ball away. So Harold will march up to the line of scrimmage. He's person is in shotgun formation. Play action. Going to the end zone. Touchdown. Robert Johnson. And it's getting a little tighter, Coach. A little. A little play action to freeze the linebacker inside. You'll see the fake to the fullback or the running back right, then throw it right in, right in line with the fake. They pull the defender forward, then throw in behind him. Good, good scheme, good plan. Now, if it's man-to-man -man coverage, it's a little tougher to do that. But against the zone coverage, you can get that done. And they do get it done, so now it's the extra point for Alex Trelika. Between the uprights as he sneaks it in the uh, right inside that left upright to make it 21. So they cut the lead down to 17. Robert Johnson from Graham Harrell back in a moment. Texas Tech certainly has the momentum going in their direction. Dominic Jones again, he will bring it out of his own end zone. Got a crease. Crossing the 25-yard line before he is brought down. Motion man for the Gophers. They stay on the ground. He's Penix, he's uh, brought out of bounds. So uh, it's what you would expect, Coach. Uh, the Gophers going to just continue to try to grind it out and run that clock down. Yeah, but yeah, they will then, if they stay true to form, they will come up with a pass when you don't expect it and hit hit a nice chunk. That's what they've done in the second half. 17 point lead for Glenn Mason, and you start talking about the job that he has done in building this program up. Before he got there, there weren't a lot of bowl games that the Gophers were going to. Looking deep down the side. He got it. And what a catch! Beautiful <laughs> catch by Eric Decker. Holy mackerel. These guys, it's amazing. <laughs> that was a beautiful, beautiful play. You talk about accuracy. Yeah. But the receiver, the receiver really helped the quarterback on that one. They were working together that time. There's a red shirt freshman doing a beautiful job. It's one on one press coverage. Gets the time to throw it. He lays it up over the outside shoulders, the right side of your screen. Here it is. Boop. Look at belly out. Beautiful, beautiful play. You don't see any better than that in the NFL. He is a great athlete. Cold Springs, Montana. Back to the ground now. See, if they don't stop him here, boy, it's going to be really tough coming back. And the offensive line looks like right now they're getting a, a little stronger. And maybe that. All that possession time early at first quarter when they were banging on and doing all those things and eating up the clock, wearing down that defense. It's showing now. Softening the up. Penix with 172 yards on the ground on 27 carries and a touchdown. His best game was 173 versus Purdue. So if he goes in one more carry, he's going to have his best game of his career. Second and four. Unbalanced line to the right. They pitch, Penix, yeah. broken play. Yeah, Great they job. All over it. Yeah, they and broke it. Tillman. Yeah. They had a mental mistake on that play, believe it. They turned the defender loose. They were an unbalanced line, more people to the right. And you'll see this from 
out here. They have a wing over here like that, but they don't block this defender. I don't know if someone lined up wrong or if some offensive lineman was supposed to pull, but nobody blocked Tillman, number 56. You know, Tillman's father was an All-American at Texas Tech. He's watching this game. Yeah, he played seven years for the Dolphins as well. He's a pretty good football player. Tillman's hoping to get a sixth year of eligibility. Third and seven for the Golden Gophers. Cupido tries to dump it off. He was feeling some pressure as the, the white jerseys got in beyond the line of scrimmage. I think they're trying to sneak somebody out of the backfield on that, and they, they snatched him. They, they grabbed him and didn't let him get out. I'm not too sure. But they did get some pressure on him, and they ran a cross stunt up in the inside, and there comes Steve. Uh, yeah, that was Davis, I think, 92. Oh, Nichman. Nichman, okay, that, that's a Seth Nichman. Fourth down and seven, 17 point lead, and the Golden Gophers are going for it, just so you know. This has been their profile all year. Yeah, they, they've got some issues in the kicking game. Cupido, three step drop, pump fake, sacked. and down he goes. It's Daniel Charbonnet who comes up with the sack. He comes off the top, number 10. Oh, here he is up at the top of your screen, coming off. They didn't account for the safety coming. I think Pinnock saw him, but saw him late. And Charbonnet, that sounds like a Cabernet or a Chardonnay <laughs> or a combination of both. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, this fine wine. That was a nice was play. A fine play. <laughs> you bet. Yeah. It takes time to do a good run. Uh, Coach, I'm, I'm not surprised that you're adept when it comes to breaking down wine as well as football. Give him time. Harold, nice out throw. Flat. Nice throw. He is impressive to me. There's no effort for him to throw a difficult pass. No strain, no overemphasis of body motion. He just flips it with his arm. You go, look, look how easy he makes this look. See how no, no, no forcing the throw. Nice rhythm, good catch out there by Todd Walker throwing a, just a, you know, a zone break out pattern. And as you mentioned, Coach, they're only bringing three, so he's got plenty Here of time. Brought five this time, so he's going to have some trouble. And he wanted to run a screen. He had no one to go to because they had the screen man picked up man to man. Good change of pace that time by David Lockwood, the outside linebacker and defensive coordinator who calls the signals. Just caught him off balance a little bit. You'll see here, there's going to be more people coming now. As you look there, normally it's been three. Now here comes four. Here comes fifth. See, now they're covered with six people downfield and rushing five. Bring up second and ten for Mike Leach's team. Trailing by 17, hoping to strike quickly. They're bringing five again. Harrell across the center. He's got a man. And it's Eric Morris who hauls it in. Don't forget, following us here on NFL Network, NFL Total Access. Fran Charles, Jamie Dukes. Good job of picking that up. Again, and Rod Woodson will break everything they down. They brought five people that time. Darren and covered with six. They used the same the defensive scheme twice in a row. And looks like they're coming with something different here. They're rushing four this time. But again, not getting to Harrell. Oh, and he misses his man. Yeah. He was looking for Falani, Joel Falani, the captain out of Paradise Valley High School right here in Phoenix. Yeah, well, he slips, I think, on this moist grass down there. He turns back to the inside. He tries to stop, and you can see him slip. But the ball was thrown behind him. So second and ten. Clock stops on the incompletion. You look at the numbers of Harrell tonight, 23 of 38, 295. A couple of touchdowns and the pick. Play action, Harrell again across the middle. Johnson complete inside the 15 for another first down for the Red Raiders. This time they keep two backs in the backfield, only have the, the, the three receivers spread out, and they fake a draw to the inside initially, freeze people, then they go down in the seam with a nice sharp throw and a very good call by Mike Leach. Clock stops, and now as it's set, begins to uh, roll. Harrell with time 
Again, it's Johnson spinning, still on his feet, reaches across. Is that like a touchdown? It looked like it, unless they say his knee hit. Looked like to me from here, but I am so far away, I'm testing my glasses. <laughs> Believe me. Get after him, Mike. We're going to have to get you some binoculars up here, Coach. <laughs> Robert Johnson has had a terrific night. Six receptions. Touchdown. And it is a touchdown. So Graham Harrell we takes it in. Game. We got a football game. Don't count these kids out. We told you about their quick strike ability. And now they've got it within 11. Seven plays, 63 yards in a minute 31, Coach. About their average for many of the games they played. Trelika on for the extra point. Through the uprights, and we got a 10-point ball game, Coach. The sophomore from Ennis, Texas, goes across from a yard out, and they're within 10. And welcome back. Take a look at Graham Harrell, who scored the latest touchdown, and look at the scoring by quarter, Coach. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming on. They're coming on. And that third quarter field goal opening drive by Minnesota right now looms a very, very big series. It was just a 20-yard field goal by Joel Monroe, but right now it has the Gophers up by 10 as opposed to 7. So plenty of time left, 7.49 on the clock here in Tempe, Arizona. 18th annual inside bowl. Well, we got the offense that we thought we were gonna get. I think I'd go back to that pure three-man rush. Cover with eight, fake the reverse on the kickoff return. They do fake it, and it's Jones who has it, and he's got plenty of yards as he crosses the 30, just shy of the 35. Last three possessions have resulted in touchdowns. And the Gophers will go to the ground, and Penix will get five, perhaps six, pending on the spot. Very good running after initial contact. These yards are critical right now. That time, uh, Chris Butler, number 93, tackled him about one yard gain, and he ran out of the tackle for more yards. And when you're trying to maintain possession here and ball control and eat up the clock and hold your lead, those kinds of runs are big rings, big runs. There's the yak yarders There's that you've yeah. been tracking. Yeah. Bunch on the right. Second and three. They go Penix, and he stopped. Number 96, Deontay Dawson, the senior from Shreveport. He's the captain of that defensive football team, co-captain with Bruce Stratton, and he's a fine player. You watch him play. He may be a little bit undersized for the NFL as a defensive end, but he might end up as a, a stand-up linebacker. You'll see him crashing in there. He has great acceleration out of a three-point stance. He can burst to the ball, and he plays the game very, very low. A Hendricks Award candidate, 6'3", 254, playing in his final game for the Red Raiders. Third down and four. Huge play for the Red Raiders. Cupido looking for Wheel Wright, and he hauls it in. Out of bounds. Oh, they say he's out of bounds. See, he got him in mat, uh, man coverage. Press man. Now, sometimes when you have press man coverage or tight man coverage, a short out converts into a fade down the sideline. That could have happened right here. But you see... He's out of bounds. He's only have to get one, but he definitely had the uh, left foot out of bounds. Yeah, all the way. He tried to drag the right foot, but wasn't able to do, do it. it. And they're not going to go for it here. Oh, no. call here, you're going to boot it away. They're starting to sweat on the other sideline right now. Having been in that situation a few times, you call it puckering. <laughs> Kusick <laughs> puts a leg into it. Amendola avoids the first wave. Cuts uh -oh. around the center of the field, crossing the 40-yard line, and the Red Raiders clearly have the momentum. They're down by with 5.34 to go. Amendola with a terrific return, 
Now we'll see what Graham Harrell can do with it here at the Insight Bowl. And welcome back. It was at one point 38 to 7, now 38 28. And Texas Tech has the ball back, and they are one of the quickest offenses, one of the best in the nation. In fact, number one in all the country in quick strike, 24 touchdown drives in under two minutes. And they've got 534 to go. Harrell will shuffle underneath. It's Woods with a big hole crossing the 50. He's got a first down as he's brought down at the 42-yard line. That play was originally uh, designed at the University of Utah with Jack Curtis. Really? It, but yeah. You'll see this. They're going to flip the ball underneath. He'll go like that, flip it to him. They'll pass it right there to get the end up the field. Here he goes. Now they flip it to him, and then upfield. It's a running play. If he drops it, it's not an it's not a, a pass. It's don't get it, don't get it. this time it's Walter out the pass. flat. It's not a fumble. He'll pick up five yards before he's crunched by Truman Banks. Under five minutes to go. Again, it was 38 to seven. And again, the no huddle. Second and five. Covering with eight. Carroll with plenty of time. Near side. And it's caught by number 12, Eric Morris. And he's got another first down. And I believe he was able to get out of bounds. Oh, yeah. Got to be careful playing too loose. It looks like they're going to come with a multiple rush this time. Yeah, they're bringing four people, brother. It's Johnson again on that little comeback as he's brought down at the 10 yard line. Incredible. The ball will be thrown to the right side of your screen when he finds that little hole inside. See, there wasn't a fifth defender underneath there that, or a fourth defender. There's only three under, and they found that hole. They rushed that man that was normally covering in that hole. First and goal to goal from the 10 yard line. Harrell hands it off. Woods still on his feet, powering his way inside the five yard line. Great determination. That's excellent, excellent effort. And the Golden Gophers have got a rally. That, de that defender needed some help. Just determination. He's going to, this is guts running. He, they can't get him on the ground. He needs some help. Where's those other Gophers? Under the ground. Yeah, Kevin Mannion got carried for about five yards on the play. He needed some help. Quick snap. I don't know if he Carroll got in. Carroll tries to go across. I don't think he got in then. No See signal it. as of yet. And it, the clock is running. That was Cheryl's who was able to prevent him from going in. So it brings up a third and one, Coach. You're down by 10, Coach. Is a field goal an option here? Do you think about that at all? Well, you can, yeah, you could because you're two scores out of it. You get the first one with three points and come back and get the seven. But I don't know with 245 you can afford to do that. Again, they hand off underneath. This time, it's a touchdown by Woods. Shannon Woods, the sophomore from McKinney, Texas, goes into the end zone, and we've got ourselves a four-point game. Going to... Uh, one because uh, Alex, their PA ticker, PA ticker is an NCAA record holder of now what, 166 in a row? Exactly. Consecutive PATs? Is that the right? longest streak in the history of the NCAAs, and he puts it right through to extend that. So it's 166. So we have a three point game at one point. It was 38 to 7. Right. Let's check in with Alex Flanagan. Hey, Darren, you guys talk about the momentum. Clearly, Texas Tech has had the momentum all of the fourth quarter, but it really sparked when Danny Amendola returned the punt. The sideline over here on Texas Tech just went crazy. want to remind you guys, I know that you know that this team can score quickly, but in the fourth quarter, they have scored, outscored their opponents. They have scored 157 points now in the fourth quarter so far this year. That's to their opponents, 69 points. Texas Tech, uh, three behind, Darren. Can they get it done? Well, we certainly will be here to watch and find out. I mean, it, this is a thriller, Coach. Oh, yeah. It's, really oh, yeah. it's high enough. It's still loose, and it goes out of bounds. 
What a terrific job by Too Good. Yes. He, he did it too good. He got too much into it. It got batted in the air. Now you got to line up and just put your ears back and come after him. See if you can knock the ball loose. Wow. Ground game for Penix. Every inch counts right now. They've got to get up there and get everybody, defy him to throw the football, penetrate with that defensive lineman, run the linebacker through, knock him for a loose, maybe knock the ball loose. That's what they've got to try to do. So a timeout call by Texas Tech to stop the clock at 2.04. And welcome back, 38-35, Cupido. Back to the ground. The white jerseys are there to stop them, and they'll call a quick timeout. See, they dominated the line of scrimmage that time. The defensive linemen are really coming off the ball, not going to back. And that is the timeout. final timeout for Texas, Texas, Texas Tech. Tech. So third and seven, Coach, and now no more timeouts for Texas Tech. A minute 59 remaining. Third down and eight for Cupido. Play action. They get him. They rush him, and they sack him. What a play by They're, Paul Williams. They were trying to make it out the backside, and uh, he just didn't get away with it. You'll see that, that they brought the pressure off the corner to the short side of the, the formation. They're bringing the pressure right here, knowing the block. The quarterback's going to try to come out and get outside it. Couldn't do it. They were bringing too many people at the house, and that's Mario Reese, the only senior in the two deep on Minnesota's defense making the play. Big play. Wow. Here's a fourth down situation they're not going for. <laughs> All right, you take a look at Danny Amendola. Kusek on, booted away. It's a good one. Amendola drifting to his right. Takes it, avoids a tackler. And so he gets up to the 12-yard line. And they have a minute and six to go to get into field goal range and tie up this game. Now, uh... If there's ever been a team in college football prepared to move the ball efficiently in this situation, it's the one we're going to watch snap the ball right now. Carroll out of his own end zone. Pumping with time. He's got a man. It's Ferrani who avoids it. Oh, Johnson, Robert Johnson who makes the grab. He, he is strong, this guy. He is strong. Now, he, he's 6'1", 218 pounds, and he really carries it well. And a great job turn in pattern and then getting out of bounds with it see he wheels they doesn't get that they don't get him down on the ground right there that was Mario Reese 48 uh, the only senior in the defense and uh, he gets the first down gets out of bounds stops the clock at 44 Harrell going the other side of the field beautiful pass what touch he laid that over the defender as about as well as you can do it and Edward Britton out of bounds as they move the chains up to the 41 yard line now the pressure now is in the defensive coordinator do i change up and i do i put pressure on him if i put pressure on him i have to go to some man coverage it looks like they're going to play uh, with a real loose zone they're blocking the they ran a middle screen that time falani gets up to the 50 yard line as the clock stops now remember they're going to start the clock once they place the ball the field goal, the field goal kicker's career long is 49 yards. He's 14 for 20 this year coming into this ball game, and he's only one for three outside of 40 yards. So they're going to get it in there as close as they can. He's six for eight between 30 and 39 yards. We already told you about his record that he set for PATs, but this is a long PAT. Yeah. <laughs> he would have to get to the 32-yard line to. Make it a 49 yarder, and they're going to be about a half yard shy. And I imagine seconds. checking this is actually helping the Red Raiders because now they can pounce on that ball once the spot goes down. <laughs> Amazing. 29 seconds remaining. Minnesota was up 38 to 7, and now with 29 seconds to go, Texas Tech is within three.
Graham Harrell out of the shotgun. Quick snap. The time. Fires near it's side good. incomplete. Looking for Joel Falani. That was 21 a, seconds that remaining. That was a hook in curl back toward the sideline, and he just threw it a little too low into the outside. You look at that red line, and that shows you where the Red Raiders would need to get to match Alex Trelika's career long of 49. Again, out of the shotgun. Under 20 seconds to go. Joel Falani makes the catch out of bounds inside the 45 yard line. 17 seconds on the clock. First and 10. You got to be thinking now, maybe from a defensive standpoint, of changing up your coverage a little bit. Maybe not blitz, but put a, a, a little more pressure or roll up on the receivers so they can't catch those short ones. Harrell with it. plenty of time. Inbound. And it's complete <laughs> on the near side to Robert Johnson. See, if you roll up on the receivers and, and, and disrupt their courses, that disrupts the pattern timing, and then the safeties pick him up behind him. His ninth reception, Coach, for 97 yards. And, Coach, again, the lineman right on top of the ball. As soon as the lineman get off, they but, can snap the ball, but the, the clock will, will begin. The defensive backs are so far off those wide receivers that they don't roll up from that position. He throws a quick out pattern. He's in field goal range. Yeah, well, see, they rolled up time. on him. Fires yeah. incomplete. See, he wanted to throw the out to the outside wide receiver, and the corner rolled up on him, and he couldn't. Now what do you do, Coach? You got five seconds. I still think you try to make the first down throw out of bounds. You know, the, the yards you need for the shorter field. Well, they're going to bring on Alex Trulli. Oh, okay. They're not going to take any chance here. He's going to set up at about the 42-yard line. Yeah, five seconds. Yeah, there we go. So it will be a 52-yard attempt to send this game into overtime. Trelika's career long is 49 yards. Snap is good. Kick it is up. Good. It's on the way. Good. We're tied at 38. What did, <laughs> what's that, oh, Nelly, <laughs> oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, I said it to go. Alex Trelika, that would have been good from another six, seven yards back, from 52 Nailed. yards, a new career long to send this into overtime. The other thing it sends it in with unbelievable momentum, if they win the toss, they mean Tech wins the toss. <laughs> they will want to uh, they'll elect to kick off from it. The Tech elects to kick off, being the offensive team that they are with the college rules. And look at Glenn Mason's Mason. reaction. <laughs> he can't believe it. Disgusting. <laughs> He's got great composure right there. Right? So we're headed to overtime here at Tepe in the 18th annual Insight Bowl. Texas Tech in Minnesota, what a thriller. <laughs> Minnesota had a 38 to seven lead and Texas Tech has stormed back here in the second half and tie it on an Alex Trelika career long 52 yard field goal. So Minnesota begins complete and that's Logan Payne, who was up near first down yardage. The Golden Gophers get the ball first here in overtime. <laughs> See, the, the momentum right now is on the white jersey side of the line. Goodness, with all the excitement, what they have done, and that normally carries over into an overtime. Cupido, the senior, the all-time leading passer in the history of Minnesota. Nice. Penix on the ground. He has enough to get the first down. Nice tackle. Really By the well way, done. Coach, if Texas Tech were to win this game, it would be the greatest comeback in the history of bowl games. The previous deficit was 30 points that Marshall came back against East Carolina back in 2001 at the GMAC Bowl. They trailed 38-8. to 
course, it's 38 to 7 here at the Insight Bowl. Whoa! Penix bottle up. Woo! Great play by defensive lineman Keith Dawson. He got underneath Jack Simmons, the tight end, who was trying to cut him off. And this guy can really play the game low. He is a senior playing in his final game. He's for exciting. Texas Tech. There he is right there coming underneath. He's really tough for the tight end to cut him off like that. He's got to use better foot footwork to get to him that way. He and that is Jack Simmons, who can definitely catch the ball, but Spaeth, a superior blocker. Cupido underneath looking for Simmons, and he couldn't hold on. He threw that pretty hard. He really did. And remember, Coach, the Golden Gophers, they do not exactly have what you would call a stellar kicker. Jason no. Giannini, who was their field goal kicker for much of the season, lost his job in the season finale versus Iowa. And Joel Monroe missed from 40 yards in his only field goal attempt in the regular season. We saw him hit one earlier, but that was from 20 yards. You have defined a problem. <laughs> Cupido. With some time, corner end zone, oh. nearly picked off. So now you make a decision. Do you go with Giannini or do you go with Monroe? Monroe has attempted one field goal and four PATs. He missed the one field goal. Giannini is seven for 12. His long being 41 yards. But he is five for five inside 40 yards. And uh, that's, you know. They're gonna go with Joel Monroe. Really? The sophomore from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, who has already kicked a 20-yard field goal in this game. He missed from 40. This one is from 32. The kick is up, and it's between the uprights and good. So Minnesota, that's gutsy. They put three on the board. That's gutsy. Giannini was 16 for 18 inside 40 in his career, and to, to go with the guys only kicked one field goal, they, they know him a lot better than we do. <laughs> now the Red Raiders get an opportunity. If you ever played defense, now's the time to do it. Now here you're caught in a dilemma of what kind of coverage you have. What kind of coverage? You know, down here it's much, it's, you start playing those loose zones there, at least you don't have to back up very much. And you're always moving forward. So your, your opportunities for intercepting playing zone coverage is down here a little bit higher. Graham Harrell now. They send Filani in motion. Harrell, a little too high. He was looking for Johnson, and he had him, Coach. Yeah, and you notice when he does miss a guy, it's normally high, never in the turf, never low or outside. He, when he misses a guy, he throws it over the top of him. What do you attribute that to? I don't just this kind of throw. Just not, he has that nose up properly. They run, they tried to get it right down the hole right there. And actually, Johnson wasn't going full speed right there. Maybe that threw him off. I think he read the zone and settled in the zone. Second and ten for Harrell. We are in the first time Texas Tech coming back from a 38-7 deficit. This is Joel Filani, the native of Phoenix, coming home, trying to close out his career. What a storybook ending this would be for him. Oh, it would. Say they threw a little wide receiver screen. Quick pass to one receiver. The other two receivers go downfield and block the potential tacklers. They did execute that pretty well. It's like a wide running play, really. It, it's usually, a, I bet it's a 90% efficient in terms of completion. How about Falani? 10 catches, 156 yards in his career finale. Finale for, finale <laughs> for Falani. <laughs> Harrell out of the shotgun. Fakes the underneath stuff. Again, again. Back to Falani. Works his way, pulls his way inside the 10-yard line. Wow. And Davis. Um, you just, just, I'm just watching that Minnesota defense. Look at a move. They're just, you know, it's it, it just not the same. Coach, again, it, it bears repeating, this would be the greatest bowl comeback in the history of the NCAA. I think a 31 point deficit that Texas Tech was able to erase. He's audibling right now. Harold hands it off underneath. Good defense. Woods. 
And he's nice job by Sherrills. Yeah, Sherrills. Nice the job. Yeah, did a nice job. Played that real inside out. Really nailed him real good. Defensive line didn't give any ground as well. And that, that allows the linebackers to scrape along the line of scrimmage and make those kind of plays. Sherrills here, number 56. 58 scraping off. Here he comes right into the play and peppers him. But Steve Davis had already done a good job at the point of attack. Texas Tech has never led in this ball game. Harrells. Again they hand up. Sports! Touchdown! Oh my God. So the Red Raiders have done it! <laughs> Unbelievable. They erase a 31-point deficit and stage the largest comeback in the history of bowl games. Unbelievable. And, and we were there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely unbelievable. And Brandon Jones... Brandon Jones, their senior, had one of the key blocks, the center. And Glenn Mason cannot believe his eyes. He still we go downstairs to Alex Flanagan. All right, Coach, down 31 points at one point in this game. Where do you think the momentum shift happened? Kept slugging away the second half and uh, put ourselves in a position to win it. You're emotional right now. Why? Uh, well, it's, it's a hell of an effort by those guys. It was a great effort. You, you were just joking with me that you said to me, hey, I bet you didn't think you were going to be talking to me no, at the I end didn't, of this I game. don't think you thought you were. I thought, I, I thought we could win this thing, but I'll tell you what, that second half, we squandered some chances there, too, you know? You really did think, though, you could win at the half? Yes, I did. All right, Coach, congratulations. Uh, Texas Tech, Darren and Coach, their bit first win against a Big Ten team. And Texas thank Tech advances to seven and six. Oh, Alex, thank you very much. It is, again, the greatest comeback in the history of bowl games. Mike Leach's team erases a 31-point deficit in the second half and win it in overtime. The key block delivered by Brandon Jones, their senior center, to get in Shannon Woods into the end zone. Once again, our final score, Minnesota 41, Texas Tech 44. For Dick Vermeil, Alex Flanagan, and our entire NFL network crew, I'm Darren Horton. NFL Total Access is next. So long from Arizona, a thriller in the 18th annual Insight Bowl.